So that's all I get with it in the current mode. So I put this away in the cupboard for quite a few years and never touched it. And it was running fine when I last used it. And when I get it out, that's simply all it goes to. It's the old CD player thing. I've got a game in there. And it doesn't want to do anything, basically. And I did have a quick check of the capacitors in this. I thought maybe they've gone fewer slightly high. But, um... I didn't really find anything, so I really wanted to get an old, older PlayStation anyway. I never liked these little ones, but um, turns out that one didn't work either properly. So I thought I'd have another quick look at this. And what I found was, oops, get rid of the disc. Just a matter of unplugging this laser mech, being a bit careful with this connector. Grab it by that white bit of plastic. Sometimes it wants to come, sometimes it doesn't. Wobble it to side, side to side a bit. And there was a mod chip in this. I think that's what I actually did to this thing because it was one someone never came back for from memory. But I ripped that out because sometimes the mod chips cause issues. I haven't got any burnt discs anyway. And what I found, I poked around all these different caps. There's like 220 microfarad. The tiniest ones are 10 microfarad. And some 47s, that's a 10. Another 47, some 220s here somewhere. 220s, they possibly measure a bit higher because they're measuring higher than the 100s. Some of these tens measure a little bit high. I think only one of them measured right where it should be. And it was when I actually came to this little cap here. One of them actually measures short there too, I think. One of the tens. So there must be an inductor or something across it. But when I came to this little one, it's a 0.47. Just completely... Be good if you could actually see the meter, I guess. But it just measured open circuit. I've only got this sort of temporary solder back in at the moment anyway. Just to get it back to original. But what I did, I've only got this one pin on, I think, so normally these are quite hard. You need to put quite a bit of heat into them and rock them side to side a bit. Or some people actually get a pair of side cutters and, like, cut off this metal case. I don't know if we can see that, but it's got 0 .4, 0 0.47, then 50G or something, 103. So it should be a 0 .47, 50 volt. But sometimes you can chop them off and then just take the last little... A bit of the leg off the board that one i managed to get off fairly easily i actually put a bit of solder down onto like the ends of these pins some fresh solder to get the heat in and that came off reasonably well and somewhere here i have i oh, am yeah, my replacement so since i don't have any surface mount stuff in stock or very little i think there's a few there somewhere left over from some samsung tv repair kits or something i just got one of these standard 0.47, 63 is it? Yep, 63 volt. Just bent the leads at 90 degree and then bent them at another 90 degree outwards. I might put a little bit of fresh solder on there. Because you've got this metal, that metal cover obviously that sits in there. So you've got to lie this thing down flat. But just to get, just to test it to see if it actually did anything. I thought, would that likely do anything? But it is sort of down around where the laser connector is. So I thought, oh, well, maybe. Maybe it's something important. And just check that you haven't got a bridge across to those other two little caps or whatever they are there, resistors. Yeah, that's fine. Probably should put it a little bit straighter, but it doesn't really matter much. What is that? C, probably 7... I don't know, 721, 705, I've got a Q701, it's got C721 there, and so our C7, hmm, 738 is pointing to this, and I'll C721, I think, let's go into the same spot. So I'm not sure what this is actually called, but it's right next to that Q701 and that little laser mount there, probably this C705 maybe, but that's where it's located, right near that mount of that of where the laser mech sits. And yeah, replacing that, I've done, had it in and out a couple of times and it definitely seems 
to reliably get the thing going again, thank God. So I was ready to sort of toss this one out because I, I say I re never really considered these the legit PlayStation 1. They were sort of the last of them and kind of a tacky little unit really, but certainly played all right. Did the job, but what are they? A SCPH-102. Don't know if there were multiple versions of these. I think there might have been a couple of models, but I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I've had anything to do with PlayStations, but I used to fix a few of these things. And hopefully we go into the game. is it rolling? Interesting. I haven't actually tried it on this TV before in the game mode, but it's actually rolling for some reason. Well, that's not a very useful TV, but you can see we've actually got the game up, even though it's rolling for whatever reason. Video format, it's on auto. Maybe this TV's got an issue. Maybe it was automatically going to NTSC instead of power or something. But it seems to work. So it's just one tiny little 0.47 mic cap was the main problem, but I think it's probably time to recap these things. The other one seems to work when I heat it up. So I suspect that's got faulty caps as well. I changed the laser in it, which at least fixed the broken platter part, but it's still got issues reading. But it's got issues with the other laser, but it, it, when it's cold weather, which it is at the moment, it wouldn't even read the disc at all. I guess the next project will be to actually get some capacitors, get all the different values of these surface mount things, and give this thing a complete recap, and I think I'll do the same with the other one, see if it cures that one of its issues, and we'll go from there.